Ladies and gentlemen, praise the omni-siren bask in the glory that is EDF 2025. Just gonna put that out there right now. Earth Defense Force, also known as a series of games about sending ants back home to space. This is EDF 2025. This is by the original developers of Earth Defense Force, as in it is not the guys that made Insect Armageddon. It's got four classes, including the one from EDF 2. As you can very clearly see, the Wing Diver, also the Air Raider, the Fencer, and the standard Earth Defense Force Storm 1 Ranger. And it makes me really, really sad because it doesn't actually have a PC release date and might not even come to PC. I really hope it does. You know, if you want this to come to PC, then show a little bit of interest in it, yeah? Show that PC gamers might actually want something that wasn't Insect Armageddon, which is understandable because they probably also don't want the clap. Earth Defense Force 2025 is a game about killing giant space ants. This is the co-op version. We are going to play two-player split-screen because that is the man-mode way of playing this game. There is going to be online co-op as well. You can slightly customize the colors of the helmet of your trooper. Very important to note. I'll be showing you some ranger gameplay on the first mission. I'll show you a little bit of fencer. There'll be some wing diver gameplay in there as well because I'm playing along with one of the guys from D3 Publishing. He's going to play a wing diver who by default has the rapier laser assault weapon which is kind of a laser shotgun and a plasma launcher. I start with an assault rifle with a 120 round magazine and an infinite rocket launcher. Does it have five difficulty modes like the first one? Yes, it does. Okay, I'm, I'm going to have to try and balance between pandering to people that love Earth Defense Force, i.e. me, and those of you who have no idea what EDF actually is. L consider this, right? Fully destructible city, lots of giant space ants that are about 20 times the size of you, then consider that those creatures are the smallest creatures that the game throws at you. Hundreds of enemies on the screen at once, a bunch of frame drop, ridiculous explosive weapons, and some of the most cringy, hilarious translated Japanese dialogue in the history of ever. That is Earth Defense Force in a nutshell. This is a game about giant space ants and blowing up the city in order to save the city. This time around, they've got civilians in stylish clothing. It is not a game that really survives too much on its graphical fidelity because there are hundreds of things on the screen at any given time. And even then, of course, the Xbox 360 cannot handle it with obvious frame rate drops here and there. It is also not a game that takes itself too seriously, as I think you can very clearly see from some of the loading screens. Let's get into a little bit of EDF. I'll show you the default weapons. Yeah, these are the default weapons. There are hundreds of weapons in this game that you can unlock via random drops. The strength of the weapon is often determined by the level of difficulty that you are actually playing on. Here we go. Welcome to Earth Defense Force. You can also upgrade your overall character by getting armor drops. These will kind of be required to beat the harder difficulty levels. We're playing on normal right now with default soldiers. To the right, you can see the wing diver there. And that's what the wing diver does. Yeah, she's pretty good at what she does. And I am playing the ranger, kind of standard storm one kind of guy. My assault rifle has an absurd amount of ammunition in it. Ammo in this game is unlimited. Clip size is what's important because, of course, reload times can mean you get eaten by giant space ants, which is not ideal. Wing divers, as you can see, can fly. Storm one kind of can't, but he does have a few other abilities up his sleeve, including a lot of heavy firepower, reasonable mobility. He's kind of a jack of all trades. He has access to some of the more classic EDF weapons. It is, of course, very, very easy to blow yourself up. That is a pile of giant space ants that are currently eating the wing diver. The default space ants now have the ability to grab you and kind of try and eat your character. You can be saved by your co-op partner. Already this is kind of madness. You're noticing the buildings are coming down. Some people like to call it Levolution. We like to call it Earth Defense Force. We like to call it blow up every building because it's the best way of making sure you have firm line of sight on the other space ants. Ants can climb up buildings. Ants will fly all over the place. Bits of ants will fly all over the place. Civilians will remain mysteriously unharmed. Why? Because that's just how elite the Earth Defense Force actually is. No question about that. Now... I, I'm kind of hyping this game a lot, I know. Usually I don't do this, and then there's like, there's small occasional exceptions. 
Earth Defense Force 2017 was my first experience with the series on Xbox 360. It was one of the games I put the most time into on Xbox 360. I had a blast with it. Earth Defense Force 2025, from what I have played of it, seems to be everything 2017 was and more besides. Yeah, One of the best things, possibly one of the only good things about Insect Armageddon, which was not a game that I enjoyed, was the fact that it had multiple classes. This game has that too, but goes right back to the old Earth Defense Force setup. It's kill everything on the level, no nonsense sub-objectives, no nonsense scripted stuff. Fully destructible environment. It is just blow up absolutely everything. As you can see over to the right hand side there, that is the default weapon. That's the default weapon of the Wing Diver. The default is this gigantic scatter laser thingy. Of course, that being like one of the weakest weapons in the game. We are talking about a game whereby it is entirely okay and reasonable to have a rocket launcher that blows up half the city, and yet somehow the game remains challenging regardless because of the sheer scale of stuff you're going to have to deal with. This is just the basic set of ants on normal. On Inferno mode, they would kill you with one shot. They gain other abilities as they go through that. They'd gain the ability to spit fire if it was anything like Earth Defense Force 2017. I may or may not have accidentally blown up my friend. I should probably go and sort that out, as you can see. And that, that's kind of what the game does. Uh, it's just that. It is blow up all the aliens. Like, you are not penalized in any way for blowing up bits of the city. You'll also notice, by the way, that the corpses on the ground actually do form a physical barrier. I believe you used to be able to clip through them, although it has been a while since I've played EDF 2017, so I may be entirely wrong there. What I can do here to my co-op partner is give away a portion of my life to get her back on her feet, which is always nice. Now, I was speaking to the publisher of this game just about a couple of concerns about 2017. One of the biggest ones being that vehicles were kind of a waste of time unless you were sort of forced to use them on one mission. Apparently, they have buffed the vehicle significantly and made them an awful lot more useful, which is always nice. There is also a class which is basically a vehicle into itself, that being the Fencer, which is a mech trooper that has kind of a short-ranged lance and a massive minigun on one arm. He can he doesn't move all that fast, but he's pretty durable, so he's basically a mech running around the place. I blew her up again. Um, I, I would say that I'm so sorry, but that's absolutely not the case by any stretch of the imagination. We'll get her back on her feet. Let's be. Let's not hit that button. I'm not used to these controllers. I don't understand. Why is there this big X button in the middle? I don't. I don't get it. Just use a keyboard and mouse. It is a glorious, glorious celebration of alien slaughter. It's probably the best way to describe EDF, and that's kind of always been the way of things. But it does have that replayability because of the way the difficulty level system works. You see there on the on the ground, I'm picking up armor packs, and the next mission, I will have a larger health pool as a direct result of that. So you need to grab as many of those as possible. That's a weapon crate. That means I'll have a new weapon next time around to play with, which will always be fantastic to mess around. Hopefully, we can get something really, really cool. And that's kind of how the progression works. You get into a situation where you don't have enough armor to beat the next difficulty level, so you play a previous one, and you unlock progressively better weapons via random drops as you do it, and then, of course, you figure out what loadout is best for each mission. It, it's cool. It's really, really cool. What's not cool is the fact that I'm being eaten by ants. I must go. My planet needs me. Yeah, that's, that's Earth Defense Force in a nutshell right there. Completely exaggerated, completely over-the-top nonsense. And it does it so very well. And playing this in comparison to 2017, everything just feels higher fidelity because it is. You've got way more choices because you do. It's got online co-op, which 2017 didn't have. There are just way more reasons to play it than 2017. Admittedly, the best way to play it is still couch co-op, as you can see with the split screen. I, I really do adore... EDF, and frankly, this one looks even better. And of course, the most disappointing thing about it is right now, they, they're not targeting next gen with it, which I feel would be phenomenal if they did, because of course, you could just have much more stuff on the screen, higher frame rate, 1080p in seven, instead of 720. You'll probably notice obvious frame drops, and that's only on like the first mission. There'll probably be a lot more of that in split screen, which is unfortunate. That's kind of why it's a better idea to play it online, because you won't get as many frame drops. And of course, no PC release as of yet. 
EDF has been traditionally a very Japanese kind of series. It did make its way over to Western markets, didn't do amazingly well. And I think, unfortunately, Insect Armageddon may have to some degree kind of poisoned the well, as it were, for PC users, because that was their experience of EDF. And it's like, no, guys, no, just please. That, that is not what Earth Defense Force is. Just trust me on this. Trust me. 2017 is a real EDF game. Earth Defense Force 2 was a real EDF game on PlayStation 2. This is a real EDF game. And it's amazing. It's absolutely hilarious as a direct result. Absolutely love it. Uh, you'll notice I managed to get myself a grenade launch. I think it was a grenade or grenade launcher by the looks of it. I'm going to switch up some classes a little bit. See how that one goes. So that's the wing diver. We're going to probably take the fencer for this one. So it's a power framed armored soldier. You actually have four loadout spots in this one. And you can fire with the left and right triggers, as you might imagine, to utilize those weapons. You can equip deflection shields and various other things. It's kind of beastly. You can have up to four weapons at once. We're going to keep the deflection shields for the time being, since we don't have a huge amount of choices there. But I believe you can fire, if I recall correctly, you can fire two weapons at once, which is pretty damn cool. You also have a very short-range weapon by the name of the Blast Hole Spear, which is very useful for kind of getting down and dirty, which you can do, because you're a little bit more armored. So let's hop in and see exactly how the fencer operates here. That is the fencer on the right there. As you can see, with the gigantic minigun and the large shield, you can, of course, use that to deflect projectiles. He does have jump jets, because why the hell not? Fairly limited, but regardless. You might wonder why the hell you would play the Ranger at this stage if you have access to all that other stuff. Well, it really... <laughs> it's just spraying bullets everywhere. It really mostly comes down to the fact that the Ranger kind of has the biggest selection of weapons, and some of them can be ridiculously powerful. Absurdly so. I mean, even the default rocket launcher for the Ranger, the Stingray M1, which can be upgraded to ludicrous levels by getting other drops later on, by the way, is a really solid weapon. You're also fairly maneuverable. You can do dodges and things like that, but you can't really do with this. I'm just mowing things down. What kind of disappointed me was the fact that this minigun doesn't actually destroy buildings, but I guess it would be kind of ridiculous if it did. You'll notice that the ants are now able to kind of spit fire and acid at us, so we don't like that. And get, I might get out the blast hole spear there and just, <laughs> at short range, this thing is a gigantic melee shotgun of sorts. So you can just blast your way through stuff. It's kind of wonderful. Doesn't blow buildings, but I guess if you were to get a heavier weapon later on, you would. There's really not a lot else to say about Earth Defense Force 2025. It seems to be a worthy successor to 2017. It looks like it goes back to exactly what was good about the original games, and it abandons most of what was going on with Insect Armageddon, which is good, but it keeps a lot of the good stuff, as in, like, the multiple class options and things like that. It's ludicrous! And that's exactly what we need from an EDF game. God, I hope that they decide to bring this to PC. It's not that likely. I'm afraid, I mean, it really isn't. But hey, we've seen that happen before. If you want this on PC, let them know. Facebook.com slash Earth Defense Force. You can tweet at them, which is Earth Defense FCE. Let them know. I would love to see this on PC, and it would work so well. 60 frames per second, maybe some better texture quality. Even just the 60 FPS would be great. I'm sorry, just buildings falling around me. God, it's so damn wonderful. I absolutely love EDF, and uh, even if it doesn't come to PC, I will happily plug in my PS3 or my 360 once again to go through the madness that is this particular game. There's really nothing else like it, and I'm looking forward to once again going back home to space when this game comes out in February. Ladies and gentlemen, Earth Defense Force 2025 is brought to you from PAX in some split-screen co-op action captured on the Xbox 360. My name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. But it is not a problem. EDF's equipment has also grown stronger in seven years. You can definitely beat the evolved giant insects. I wish you good luck in battle.